Chapter 18 Caught on Video The camera was at a high angle, watching Sue as she puttered around in her workshop. This was where she did her home business, packaging up her weight loss supplements that she sold to the public. The workshop was immaculately clean, with good light filtering through the windows. I was guessing Carl had put the hidden camera up when he put in her home security system and had been spying on her ever since. It made me feel sad that anyone would stoop to such a level. Worse yet, he was my tenant, making me feel guilty by association, even though I hadn't known what was going on. Pulling my attention away from my inward thoughts, I watched as Sue put a heavy box onto the countertop. Pulling out a box knife, she cut the tape before pulling out packaging. Once she had thrown out the packaging, Sue took out several large plastic bottles. She popped the seals of each bottle. Grabbing a smaller plastic bottle from a different box, Sue set a funnel on the bottle and began counting out capsules into the smaller plastic bottle. I gasped in disbelief. Sue was repackaging someone else's capsules into her own packaging. Her whole health business was a lie. She hadn't found any special ingredient to help people lose weight. She was just upselling someone else's product as her own. Sue was lying to her customers. Turning to grab another box, Sue accidentally knocked a travel mug off the workbench. It looked like one of the expensive ones from the Cluck Cafe. She bent down to pick it up, holding the canister and the now broken lid. It had split in two. I pressed pause, but the video was already ending. The screen reverted back to showing a bunch of videos ready to play of different people Carl had been spying on. Sue had told the truth about her water bottle being broken. However, she could have bought another one before meeting Carl. Sue had a motive. A water bottle just like hers was at the crime scene with blood on it. She had lied when she said she didn't know Carl. Dean had overheard Sue and Carl arguing. Had I been wrong earlier when I had thought that Sue hadn't killed Carl? Could she have done it? The seed of doubt planted in me began to bloom into a full-grown plant, and my stomach sank. I liked Sue. We weren't friends that hung out together, but we did say hello and ask about each other's day. She was always pleasant to me. Thinking that she might be guilty of killing someone made a sour taste in my mouth. Yet what could I do about it? It was obvious the laptop had to be brought to the police. I hated the thought of Pesky's reaction when I handed it in, but I could see no other option. Then again, what if Sue was innocent? She had said her water bottle had been thrown into the trash, that she hadn't killed Carl and at the time I did believe her. Maisie Alderson had motive to kill Carl, so did any number of people if all these videos were any indication. I frowned as a thought came to me. What had Kat said? There was an Excel sheet of who he was blackmailing? Everyone on that list was a suspect. What if Sue wasn't the killer, and one of the people Carl had been extorting money from had killed him? What if Pesky only looked at Sue's video, and she went to prison for a crime she didn't commit. The whole scenario made my head hurt. A glance at the clock on my nightstand showed it was getting late. I had to be up on time for work the next morning, but that didn't stop me from opening the Excel sheet. At first, it was all a blur of numbers. I admit, math has never been my strong suit, and as soon as I could, I stopped taking the class. The basics I could do. Algebra and all that other puzzling stuff? Not so much. However, the more I looked at it, the more it made a horrifying sort of sense. Carl had been blackmailing a large number of people. While each amount wasn't particularly staggering, the tallies at the bottom of the columns were. He had been raking in significant cash. I swallowed in disbelief. With the money Carl had been making, I could fix so many problems in my life, do so many repairs on the house, send Cat to a proper college, and maybe even take a vacation for the first time ever. 
It was tempting. I squelched down the feeling of envy. It wasn't my money. It was illegal. It was wrong, and I was not about to take over Carl's accounts and go blackmailing people in the town I loved. Before my errant mind started going further down that bad idea path, I decided to delve deeper into Carl's extortion of Sue. The good thing about the program was I could perform a search function. It wasn't long before I had found a history of payments from Sue to Carl. He had indeed been blackmailing her for a steady amount for months, dating past last year. Lately, Carl had raised the price. This was probably why Sue had been overheard saying she couldn't afford to keep paying him. I could see the last two payments were delinquent. Sue had stopped giving Carl money. Or maybe she had been negotiating for more time to pay when they argued. Perhaps the argument got out of hand, and Sue had hit Carl over the head with her water bottle, an unlikely strike to the temple, causing him to die. It seemed unlikely. While Sue was a runner, I had never known her to frequent the gym or lift weights. She was a petite woman. While Carl wasn't tall, he was average height for a man. Could Sue have had enough strength and height to knock him on the temple? Had she taken him by surprise? Could she have done it? Feeling awful, I shut down the spreadsheet and closed the laptop. I really didn't want to know any more. Tomorrow, I would hand in the laptop to Pesky, deal with his no doubt extensive admonitions and try to figure out how to deal with my newly rebellious daughter. Did you know that I have a weekly newsletter where you can find out what's happening in my writing life? You can join by going to josephinebindma.com.